Hi AP World students, this is Longnecker here, and today I want to talk to you about cities. Cities are important for us in AP World History because most of the civilizations, with some important exceptions like the Mongols, are urban or city-dwelling civilizations. So it's helpful to know why cities are so important and how they function in these civilizations. So there's four key purposes of cities that I want to talk through with you today. The first is that cities are political and administrative capitals. We talked in our political spice tea theme about the fact that states and governments need a bureaucracy, need a group of people to um, actually run the government on a day-to-day -day basis. And all of those people need places to work. And so the buildings that house those offices and give structure to government meetings or a place for people to come and make petitions to the government or to the king or emperor, those typically happen in cities because it's easy to kind of build up the infrastructure that support these government functions. Government officials are going to need supplies of food, they're going to need places to live, they're going to need clothing and other materials to make their lives comfortable. And so as these government functions start to grow, so too do the services that allow those government functions to exist. And so the cities tend to grow with the size of the government. We see examples of large government centers in China, in Hangzhou for the Song Dynasty. We see examples in Europe, like Paris or London. We see administrative centers in West Africa, in Timbuktu, or in, um, in the Americas, in places like Teotihuacan. Um, so big cities as administrative centers is one of the key purposes that we need to remember. The second purpose that we want to remember is very similar, that cities are places where culture is not only expressed, but in some cases is developed, right? Culture could include things like art, architecture, which is especially important in cities because you have a lot of buildings being built. So cities are expressing their culture through their architecture. People are um, developing and expressing literature, uh, right? People are more likely to buy and sell new books in a city environment, and so literature is often developed and spread out from cities. And cities serve a religious function in terms of being cultural centers. So for example, in Europe, you might think of the largest cities in Europe often have some of the largest cathedrals, like Notre Dame in Paris or the Westminster Abbey Cathedral in London. These large buildings not only house a lot of people, and not for living purposes, but a lot of people can fit inside of them for um, Catholic mass to be performed, but they also serve, because they're so big, as reminders to the people. You can see them all across the city um, in an age before skyscrapers especially. You can see these buildings and remember the importance of that religion to the community. And in a place like Europe, where feudalism had people largely decentralized, coming into a city and being reminded of the cultural unity that the Catholic Church provided makes this city has a really important cultural and religious function. The third important function that cities serve are marketplaces and centers for trade. People come from the surrounding countryside to buy and sell goods. And if the city is large enough, people come from other cities to buy and sell goods. And so these cities become the center points for trade networks that emerge and spread, especially across Afro-Eurasia. We might think of the Italian city-states, Venice, Florence, and Rome as really good examples of trade cities where goods are coming from a lot of different areas, from Europe, from the Middle East, from North Africa, all coming into these Italian cities and then spreading out from these Italian cities to other regions. So they are centers of both regional and long-distance trade. And going along with that trade, cities also become manufacturing centers. Raw materials might come in from the surrounding countryside or be imported from a far off region. And people might find it more efficient to 
transfer or uh, to transform those raw materials right there in the city where they can easily sell them off into another region. So cotton in comes into the cities in India, um, is transformed into cotton cloth, is dyed beautiful colors, and then is sold, right? If you remember southernization, uh, the raw cotton isn't going into most of the places that want cotton. Cotton textiles or cotton cloth is spreading out throughout the Indian Ocean um, because that manufacturing center in the city is transforming a raw material from the farms into a good that people want to buy and sell. So cities serve key political functions, cultural functions. They are economic centers for trade and manufacturing. They are places where new technologies are developed and spread as people find more efficient ways to uh, make things or move things from place to place. And so as you are learning about the civilizations in Unit 1, this global tapestry, uh, unit, be thinking about what are the major cities, how are these cities functioning similarly and differently in different civilizations, because thinking about cities is going to be really helpful as we look forward to Unit 2, which is going to focus on networks of exchange. Thanks for tuning in and learning a little bit about cities. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!